Assalamu alaikum. Since the beginning of this semester, we have spent so much time trying to understand desertification, why it's important, its causes, and what is going on in the whole world, and how to quantify it, and so many things. And I think every one of us is now thrilled to know what is going on about the situation in Oman. And that's why we have this lecture today to brief you about and give you an overview about desertification in Oman. So let's start it. In today's lecture, we're going to see at the beginning what are the most common causes of desertification in Oman. And then we're going to look at all the initiatives and efforts that has been done by the Omani government and the people and the youth especially to combat desertification and to come up with a solution to this problem. And by starting by looking at the causes of desertification in Oman, we would find that we have basically two types of causes. Again, as we said in the definition, that when we consider desertification, it's basically a land degradation and that is caused by climatic changes and human activities, which are basically uh, like divided into the environmental aspects and also the socio-economic activities. So we're going to analyze desertification in Oman from all of these aspects and we will start with the environmental factors. Now, if you look at one of the most important factors that makes Oman really susceptible to desertification is its aridic nature of the climate. And if we look at Oman, we would find it it's classified uh, as hyper arid to arid countries where it has a very low rainfall average about 100 mm per year and the rainfall pattern is very sporadic and erratic like if it occurs it occurs and it's like it's spread and there is no like a, like there is no fixed trend of rainfall in Oman and sometime we might be hit in, hit by storms and those storms when it happens and when it rains like it rains heavily and the land is very susceptible and therefore it can create huge amount of soil losses due to water erosion and that would lead to aggravate land degradation processes not only that but the temperature and high evaporation rate especially if we look at the summer time where the temperature can be up to 40 sometimes to 50 degrees and the high evaporation rate that all the water that we apply just evaporate and what is left on the soil would be just the salt and we can have an overview about what is going on in terms of water resources in Oman as compared to many countries in the re MENA region by looking at the available water resources in cubic meter per capita like that, that how much water is available for each person of us and you can see the conversion between 1992 all the way to 2014 and we would see that the trend for all the MENA countries that the available water per capita is really decreasing and it's alarming because the situation is also the same for a man and it is like in a man the amount of available water resources per capita is much less than many other countries like looking at Iran or Iraq or maybe like Morocco or even other neighboring countries the second environmental factor which also have to consider is how we manage these water resources. Yes, we have a very harsh environmental conditions and we have a water scarcity, but the most important thing how we deal with the existing water resources. So then we can have enough water for our activities and our uses and also for the agricultural sectors. Unfortunately, what we can see that Although we have a very limited water resources and although we live this situation and we know it very well We can see that still like there is an over use of the existing water resources by all sectors Especially by the agriculture in general and if we look at Oman as compared to other many MENA region countries and their use water use in, in the industrial domestic and agricultural sectors you would find that in all the main regions that the water use for the agricultural sector is 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 like the highest agriculture is the most consuming of water resources the same to oman we would find that about 
88% of the existing fresh water is basically consumed by ag for agriculture based on data published on 2014. And that really is an alarming threat. But the question now, do we really have to consume that much water for agriculture or can we manage the existing water resources with a better way so we can sustain it for future generation? The answer to that question well, yes, there are always ways forward to preserve the water that we have it for agriculture. And we need agriculture, especially in the current situation where the population is booming and we need food and we need to be also like food secure country. So agriculture is important, but we have to manage it the right way. We would find that people also apply very poor irrigation practices, like for example, a lot of people are still unaware about the crop water requirement. That means that they just like keep irrigating their plants without any scientific basis. Like they believe that the plant need more water and more water, so they keep irrigating. Whereas there is basically a, a scientific basis that tell you that you just have to irrigate the plant with this amount of water and it's enough for this amount of days. So if we are familiar with this, then it can help solving the problem. Not only that, sometimes there are some farms which are irrigated with a lower water quality, like saline water quality, or also there is a high depletion of the groundwater because of the overuse of water for agriculture. If we look at the coastal areas, we have also another problem there. Because of the overpumping of the groundwater, basically, it leads to another problem which is seawater intrusion and when this seawater intrusion happens it means that all the existing fresh water now which has been deteriorated which has been over pumped is now become deteriorated even it's like becoming very saline that cannot be used for agriculture and therefore you would observe huge massive land at the coastal area especially at the bottom area now affected by salinity and they are degraded like desertified the problem of water scarcity and mismanagement is clear in many regions. I'll give you an example of what is going on in some parts of the country. Uh, Al Jabal Akhdar is one of the most beautiful and unique places in Oman because of its higher attitude and even higher amount of precipitation and because of it's like lower temperature the people there are like able to grow different crops like some fruits and nuts like like pomegranates for example peach and apples and beers and many other things you name it and even they are able like to to enjoy the life there al jibal akhtar was sustainably managed for a longer time and if you just like try to ask your parents how was al jibal akhtar in the past they will tell you about it like in at the past it was uh, like isolated not open for everyone to visit it not like now there was there were no routes and no many access and that would basically give the people like or isolate the place from many activities and and the people there were like smartly managed and 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 and, and learn how to live with that situation although it's like a mountainous area they brought soils from very fertile soil from down areas like from Izki or maybe from Nizwa and they create their their terrace system beautiful system that was like sustainably managed for thousands of years but what is going now there and how these terrace system looks like now uh, basically there are a lot of research saying that we are losing losing basically the beautiful nature of Al Jabal Akhdar we are losing the sustainable agriculture and it's not be any more there in the coming future if we keep doing the same thing like what we are doing unfortunately the terrace system now is like deteriorating the soils becomes affected by many problems even like salinity and there is a change in the land use pattern and if we look at the reasons why these things are happening you would see that scarcity of water is one of them but also how we manage water is the main factor to that problem. Unfortunately, with the increase and the expansion of population and, and many other activities, 
as well with climate change the water resources is even declining and declining there and there will be like and there is actually less water than before and for that reason now the people are not able to grow as they were doing before and not only that but many people have left the area for work or for any other reasons and and also like the young generations maybe not very interested with the agriculture so a lot of terraces were abandoned and nobody's taking care of them and the old people becoming older and older and weaker and weaker that's why when the land started to lose its like nature and virginity and becomes really degraded a picture here would show you the difference between what is going what has been in the past and what is the current situation now and as you can see from the figure up here a and b c d e it's basically pictures has been taken from Wujima area which is in Al-Jabal Akhbar and the first picture was very beautiful everything is green in 1990s but look at the situation now in 2019 completely dark picture like opposite all the beautiful vegetation just gone and if you look even at it from the satellite you would find that it is deteriorating not only that overgrazing by goats and sheep and also like donkeys or basically decreasing the vegetation destroying the vegetation cover and that even led to make the situation worse and worse and climate change which is causing the drought and which causing less water availability it's also causing a change like the increase in the temperature makes it now like almost impossible to grow some of the crops not like in the past for example and this is very clear by reducing the chill hours requirement for local fruits for example these chill hours requirement are the number of hours that are needed in the year for the flowers in able to be uh, or for the tree in able to flower and to fruits but now these numbers of hours are decreasing and therefore the fruit production and nuts is, is really decreasing and only that the beautiful flowers and the beautiful nature there will be lost will be lost if we don't do anything about it like who would make later on water or rose water where can we get beautiful flowers if we just keep doing what we are doing so we have to do something about the problem these are some snaps from Masaira. You can see from the picture the uh, terraces system and the varieties of crop that's grown in very small plots. I'll give you an example. As you can observe here, we have um, uh, we have barley growing and as you can see down we have intercropping system where we have roses followed or intercropped with barley you can see there the pomegranate and if we direct the camera down you would see even banana and date bombs all together making this beautiful nature the problem what happened here with a change in lifestyle, with climate change, rain is not coming frequently and they're facing a lot of shortage of water. And that's what is happening over there. You can see some of abandoned terraces. Now they are not able to cultivate as they used to be. The terraces you can follow up all the way to the mountain, but now all of them are just like a thing of the past. The phallage has been replaced. The phallage, which you can see there, the canal, is now replaced with pipes pumping water from somewhere, I don't know where. But again, they collected the whole water system in citrons like this. This is the only way for them to store water and to keep their agriculture flourishing. Another change in the lifestyle is the change of labor. Nowadays, most of the families have left the places and who is taking care of the garden, who is taking care of the terraces, only the lovers. How efficient, 
how sustainable their practice is still questionable. The story of land degradation and desertification is also apparent in many parts in Oman. The water scarcity and management also has led to salinization of soil and loss of the most fertile agricultural lands in Oman, which was in the past called the fruit basket. It's no more there. And this is basically happens because of the mismanagement, like in the past where when the wells were dug and like people over consume the existing and over pump the existing water resources at the coastal area. This led later on to seawater intrusion and because of the seawater intrusion, the water quality deteriorated and becomes saline. And therefore, there was no good quality water available for agriculture. And that led to a massive land use change. People abandoned their farms and becomes really like very sad about it because what they were like their main income becomes now as nothing. They lost the lands. And not only that, they like a lot of policies has been done to improve the situation. It showed impacts but still the situation is worsening because it depends how we manage the lands and you would see this picture shows you from an area in Barca where date bombs are like dead and many other trees where the land becomes really dead and one thing here to remember that once the land becomes salinized it will becomes really very very expensive and like it takes time to bring it back to its nature but there is still a hope that we can do Based on economic analysis and economic studies, which was conducted on 112 farms, they estimated the amount of like economic losses on the on the area, like to be about ranging from 600 to 1,050 when the lands becomes like from a lower salinity level to a very high salinity level. So we can see that with the increasing salinity the lands degraded and therefore it becomes unprofitable and not only that the, la the salinity has led to addiction and vegetation cover and this is can be obvious from the satellite maps and the remote sensing maps that provided here comparing Romay's area between 1991 when the situation was very mild to 2005 and you can see the distribution of the salinity levels in the lands Based on the studies, about 10% of the vegetation cover was only lost in the remains area in the, studied, in the studied area. Sand drifting is another environmental factor that leads to the expansion of desertified and degraded lands. Why? Because what is happening is that the sands in these areas are moving toward the residential areas and toward the agricultural areas and once these sands migrate and invade these areas their soil becomes unproductive again because it's like a desert so that we need to stabilize these sand use and this problem is apparent in many areas where sands exist like in like in Sharqiya, in Kamil, Al Wafi and also in Bidia, it also can be observed in areas in Al Dakhiriya where there are wadis and in Wusta regions. This, the other factor here is the overgrazing. And overgrazing is predominantly exists in, in Dufar areas. And this overgrazing problems is basically causing a reduction in the vegetation cover because now you have lots of animals higher than the carrying capacity of the lands meaning that the amount of grazing is or the intensity of grazing is much much higher than the rate of plant recovery and and plant growth and that's what lead to to a desertification problem and if we look at for example at some of other areas like where their nature is very aridic like uh, Wahiba sand areas and Al Jabal uh, Wahiba sand areas, you find a lot of like sheep and goats overgrazed there. We've seen also in Al Jabal Al uh, as I mentioned earlier in the example, and also in Dufar areas, basically in Dufar, 
Why on the far? Because in the far you have actually a massive uh, grazing by cattle. Like it's almost of the two thirds of the Oman cattle's graze happened in the far. And uh, we would see that there are many factors leading to, to the, this problem in the far. One of them is the uh, overgrazing, like which is the overstocking, like so much animals on the land more than the carrying capacity. Then you have other reasons like deterioration of the productivity of the lands and also the poor land management there. Uh, some other factors that leads to overgrazing and leads to deterioration of the lands in, in, in the far area is basically the increasing demand for meats and milk production, which basically means that you would have to increase the animal livestock and those livestock has to be also like raised somewhere where basically you they will graze on the area and they will put pressure on it another factor is basically subsidies subsidy can work to um, encourage people to increase the number of livestock and grazing because now they can get more profit with that one desertification also happens in oman because of other social economic factors and basically we can start with the first example that the tide and the practice of farming exist in most of the areas in Oman how, how they are basically uh, if maybe some of you and you like uh, have a farm with your parents and or in your home and look at these farms how big they are you would see that most of the farms in Oman are basically like one hectare or less and this small amount or this small area of farms basically would not be profitable if we keep doing what we are doing nowadays unless if you like cultivate them with a very high value crops like uh, like uh, alpha alpha or like vegetables then they become profitable in addition to that the way we use water on these farms is basically unsustainable because as i told you before like there is a low perception about and low knowledge about crop water requirement and that's basically like to, to over irrigate the lands and over consume the lands and that would basically consume the existing water resources so what we have to do to make these farms also profitable, we have to use modern irrigation system that would eventually save water and makes the farms profitable. Then we would also care about these farms because look at it. If you have something but that thing is not producing profit for you, you might not do it just for joy. You might not do it at all. But if it is making sense like profitable, feasible, then you would continue to do it. Yeah. The other factor, other socioeconomic factor is the low employment and uh, disinterestness of youth. That's mean that if we, if we ask ourselves, like, are we willing to work in the agricultural sectors or invest to it? Well, basically this is a general problem in the whole world. Like now, the youth are not motivated too much to work in the agriculture or invest in agriculture because of so many factors. But one of them basically because of the community, they view those who work in the agriculture as a lower status and people want to have to be prestige. They want to have like a secure job, like a more relaxing job. They don't want to work in the farms and so on. But when we talk about agriculture, it's more than that because the agriculture career basically is more than working in the farms because it involves the production, it involves also the packaging, the marketing, the industrial production of food. So there are many things that involve in the chain and even in the business, like as a business opportunity, there are a lot of opportunities. But again, when youth becomes like disinterested on the agriculture and the employment on this sector means this means that there will be less skilled people who would be able to bring agriculture into like a successful level and there will be less people who will study on agriculture and therefore there will not be people who will become really professional who will develop who will 
make it like uh, make it uh, upgraded to the world level like a, like how to apply the modern irrigation systems and the new techniques there are a lot of things going on in the world so if we don't study about it then who would do it for us the other things is basically the increasing number of foreign agricultural labors and their mismanagement and here you would notice that nowadays because people become less interested in agriculture they start giving full responsibility for the labor to take care of it in terms of irrigation in terms of pruning fertilizers applications and so many other things just because like they want to make the life a little bit easier and this is good in somehow because now somebody is taking care of the land with a payment however there is a side effect of this of this of these activities because we have to to look at the background of the laborers who taken care of it if we don't really train them and make them skilled uh, they won't be able to do a sustainable practice with the land the other things that we could look at them that some of them came from a, a completely different climatic nature of their countries like they for example if their country is rich of rainfall and when they come to arid countries they would still try to use the water the same way as they were using it in their country but the situation here is very variable like you cannot use the same amount of water you cannot do the same things you have to be very sustainable you have to be very efficient uh, in addition to that later on when these lovers become really skilled and trained they also like um, go back to their countries and that's basically losing again the skilled people so you see the, the link here is like it is it is not really very sustainable a new trend that appears in their area and we have been observing it through many physics that uh, people start leasing their lands they like they give the full responsibility to the land and they lease it like like they rent their land for somebody for labors and then those labors will just like uh, take the land and try to make maximum profit to it and therefore they will like extensively use the fertilizers extensively use the water and do many different things uh, something that i want to make a point here is that we cannot only blame the levers on this one of course they are they are basically part of the solution and part of the problem but we should not ignore ourselves we are basically like a main cause of this why because uh, if you don't follow up if you don't train if you if you allow practices like this then it, it's really create problems so we have to stand with them we have like to train them we have to like to be with them so we can all together make make this lens like profitable but also like uh, sustain it for future generations another socio-economic factor is the zero value of water what we mean by zero value of water because of the so much subsidy on the water here the people think like they will just like use it like this because it's very cheap and they don't pay so much for it and this is why basically a lot of people like overuse the water and that's what led it to environmental factors problems like the salinity deterioration of the water quality over abstraction of the groundwater and so many other things and you know some time in projects and problems after studying we come up with recommendations and decisions but then when you apply it on the real world it it completely give like opposite results than ex than expected during the implementation because of now how people would perceive it and how people would react to it it's, and this is like may happen especially when you don't involve people on on it and when you don't like try different things that's why the new type of the new era of science involve multidisciplinary like it means like you as an environmentalist as a soil scientist as a hydrologist have also to work even with the psychologist and with the other like the economics and the other disciplines why because then you have to analyze the problem and come up with a comprehensive solution that would really solve the situation and here i would give you an example of what happens in Dufar in 1984 there was like 
a project a decision called destocking program and the idea of this program was basically to reduce the amount of like uh, livestock raised by purchasing them so it's like when like the government buy those like uh, livestocks like the cattle like i mean like the cows like the camels and like sheep and goats then it would reduce the number but you know what happens like it gave like an opposite results why because it encourages people like now people find it very easy to sell and to get a profit and therefore like instead of reducing the number it basically increased the number and this is what's very clear from the table here as you can see like before the implementation of the stocking program the if you look at the numbers of cows and sheep camels and goats you would find it really very high look at the percentage almost 100 percent after the implementation of the program in 1983 to 84 what happens that the numbers doubled so in even like increased so see for example the numbers of cows and sheep almost doubled by like increased from 100 percent to 210 if you look at the camels also increasing all the kind of livestock increased and continued um continued with the situation until only like it shows later in in year 2000 where the camels and the goats uh, percentage decreased but still like i mean if you if you like they decreased but still like the numbers of cows are still much much higher than than the camels and the goats that's why even with the decisions and with the projects we have to be very open and we have to study it and we have to be very also flexible you remember when i told you in the implementation we have to be really very flexible that if it didn't work we have to do something else and we should not continue with the same things because that would aggravate the problem and and like would not make the situation better Another thing is basically the side effects of the sum of the touristic activities because the country is very blessed with the diverse climate like if you look at the Jabal Akhdar completely different climate the wadis and the oasis in the areas and the farms and the culture and also look at the climate in the far like so much diversity in the climate creates a diverse environment and because of that like it makes it really beautiful for tourists like to come and to enjoy and that's really very excellent for the economy very nice for the country uh, but uh, like these like uh, the, some of the touristic activities can create problems if they are not managed properly everything if it's not managed properly would lead to a problem so for example like um, like if you look at the table down here which shows you the number of uh, tourists uh, between uh, year 1988 to 2002 and you'd see that the number was really increasing from all over the world like and it's now even more and more than that because this is just up to 2002 uh, but you see that uh, some of the activities like for example driving on the vegetation or maybe like throwing the garbage or burning and so on really creates uh, creates a problem and can damage the vegetation damage the nature and this is very clear in many different areas remember some of the people uh, uh, for example in Jebel Akhdar were telling that uh, and, and here I, I want to make a point that it's not it's not it's even the local touristic activities we, we have to be we have to be very frank because what happened in the in Jabal Lakhdar when the people were telling telling us their stories, they were saying that you know some of the uh, families, the Omani families, when they come to Jabal Lakhdar, uh, unfortunately, for example, they go into the farms, their farms, their terraces, and sometimes like they pick the fruits or maybe they destroy it or they walk on the uh on the farms and that would really like destroy them make them unhappy other things that they can do when they barbecuing at night and camping and sleeping over sometimes they forgot to put off the fire and that can lead like to sparks and they're making fires and can burn the local the local uh, native uh, the local native uh, vegetation and like for example the the wild uh, the wild uh, 
like the wild uh, yeah like many of the wild trees so that's why like uh, we have to manage to manage it also the increase in the number uh, especially when the water resources becomes very limited and if we don't use for example very advanced technologies that consumes less water then it, it will be problematic because if we consume the water for like in the hotels and in the farms with the increasing population with the increasing guests like it would be really it would be really problematic if we don't use very advanced technology that consumes consumes less water all right i think now it's enough from the problems let's see what are the initiatives and the efforts that has been done to combat desertification desertification in the Omani government has taken steps forward to recognize the problem and to control it since 1970s. They set legislations, laws, uh, a lot of like activities to control the consumption of water and conserving water and restoring the lands and the vegetation and also to study the extent of the problem and find solutions to control it. And if we look back at the history in 19 77 Oman participated in the UN conference to combat desertification which was which was held in Nairobi Kenya uh, with a delegation from Diwan and the Ministry of the uh, Regional Municipalities and, and Water Resources and in two, in 1992 basically three experts from the from the uh, from the organizations came to Oman for three weeks to work on a quantitative assessment of the problem just like to scan what is going on in the region and what is the problem and to start doing something and from that time onward 1992 all the way to 2005 they've been working on something called the national action program to combat desertification in Oman where they assess the situation we studied the situation try to put recommendations and actions like political actions and decisions in order to control the extent of the problem and to do something and in 2005 they drafted or they completed the first draft of the national action program to combat desertification in oman as you can see from the picture here and one of the priorities that the omani government has taken initiative and started with is the conservation of the water resources why because we have less water resources and therefore we have to do something about it so it started with the initiation of some ministries and non-governmental organizations that would act as a central authorities for water management in the country like ministry of regional municipalities and water resources the ministry of agriculture and fisheries and the oman water society all together with the universities like Sultan Tabus University and other universities worked on conducting research that aims to optimize the water usage and also to find ways of how to make it really like possible to cultivate with less amount of water like the studies related to crop water requirement or the studies which also talking about the uh, optimization of water in all the sectors like the agricultural sector the industrial sectors and also the protection of of these waters um, uh, also like what has been done is also working with the uh, living with salinity because salinity issues that happens in the coastal area is originated by the water management so what started to be done there by for example establishment of uh, like dams or maybe also the usage of treated water or wasted treated wastewater the desalination the fog collection the cloud seeding and so many other activities that would lead to augment the water resources or try to leach the salinity and improve the situation one of the projects also which has been done for example in 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 in, in Dufar is basically trying to solve the seawater intrusion by injecting of treated wastewater and it works really it replenished the situation and, and it, it, it solved the problem 
other activities related to conservation of water resources, the establishment of the monitoring system. Why we need a monitoring system? Because we need to collect data. Once we have enough data for a long term, then we can see the changes. We can monitor the situation and we can also see whether the decisions that we are making and the projects that we implemented are really working or not. So we can take a farther step. And here talking about examples of meteorological stations that would uh, collect climate uh, information and also the gauging of wadis that would collect uh, hydrological information about the flow of wadis and also about the sediments and so many others. Other efforts has been also done to improve the land capability and here I mean like trying to restore the land study the extent of degradation on the land and try to set regulation and laws that would help to improve the situation and here I give you an example of uh, one of the first things uh, that's like uh, involved in this uh, issue is basically the mapping of the soil uh, in Oman and that basically started by the initiation of the Oman soil map and this was done because if we know the exactly, if we know the soils that exist of the land and know the management, we can then say how much lands and where are the lands are available for agricultural development. Uh, other things is basically to conduct research to study land degradation and also find solutions to this problem. And this can be related to like uh, using different techniques like the remote sensing, the social, uh, socio-economical studies uh, to study, for example, how the farmers like, uh, like uh, for example, losing and if a solution is implemented, how the solution would work and so on. Uh, other, uh, other existing example of research is basically what Dr. Malik is doing now with the Ministry of uh, Environment and Climate Affairs to map the whole Oman to see the land degradation and to determine these problems and soon inshallah the research will come up with uh, a lot of legislations and a lot of um, like conclusions. Uh, setting legislations and rules to control land use and distribution of the agricultural purpose and also to organize the process of drilling wells and the usage of treated effluent is another another step that has been taken here and also the rehabilitation of the land I mean here as I mentioned in the example before of injecting of treated wastewater for example uh, in order, for example, to replenish the groundwater or, or in order to control the seawater intrusion or in order also to use it as an augmented water resources that would help to replenish the land. Uh, another thing like the growing of the local vegetation like cedar and gaff and this also like to control the soil erosion or also like a cultivation of salt tolerant crops and this is particularly in the areas which are affected by by the salinity and here i'll give you an example of uh, what the ministry of environment and climate affairs is launching now they have a program uh, called the uh, ashjar it's an in initiative where basically they try to grow uh, local vegetation and these local vegetations like the gaff or cedar which adapt well to the climate are growing in nurseries for the in, for like nurseries belongs to the ministry and then the people can do it themselves with the help of the ministry to cultivate it and here also i'm presenting how the community involving in such an initiative for example we have uh, an example of the environmental society of oman which is a non-governmental organization that tried hard to work on different environmental issues and one of them is basically the cultivation of uh, wild trees uh, like also like the mangrove in some of the areas or restoration of the mangrove in some of the areas and that would really help to solve the problem people also in the schools and every one of us basically do this and there are a lot of people which i saw on twitter like uh, initiating these initiatives of cultivating these uh, 
uh, wild plants in many areas and also we have our so that's all about the initiative and what is going on there but now it's your time to take a step forward and to help solving the problem and also it's your time to get opportunities for your next step so here i'm presenting for you different activities that you can participate and you can involve even with your current projects that you are working with the course uh, you can participate in the wet skills and wet skills is a very nice program that uh, basically uh, like uh, initiated by the netherlands and in this wet skills program basically like uh, uh, it basically it's uh, it's a program that involves the youth so youth from different countries apply to this program and they come to work in different countries on real issues like real problems ongoing problems on the world so for example uh, last time the wet skills was held in oman and participants from all over the world participated and they worked on real issues like real problems from where these real problems comes it comes basically from case owners and those case owners can be for example the ministries the industry for example like pdo and like many other com companies anyone who have problem they can also like they will be approached by the organization give us your problem we will let the youth solving them so they bring the problems with their expertise and then the youth and the proper uh, and the youth and the expertise would have to work together in a week trying to solve these issues and then they would do some pitching activities and it's a very nice competition i'm showing you here a picture from pitching uh in in the netherlands what happens here that this is a team who is now trying to discuss their solution on one of the problems that happened or happening that facing by the netherlands government and uh, they pitch it like they have to explain their solution of they of course they worked with the case with the experts for like like under stress for one week but that was really fun but now they are now like participating in this competition with with one of the government related to the sector of water in netherland and they are pitching their project like they're pitching what they that what the problem they are solving and what their solution their technical solution and they present it and they won they won basically and they were like promised by this water authority that their solution would be implemented because it was very simple very effective and better than better than better than the solution presented by many companies there so you can get to know more about wet skills from the channel their youtube channel or their website and participate i really advise you on that one another excellent opportunity is called the falling wall and falling wall competition is really very nice one because here you would also like you work on your project and then you can participate with, you, with your project on the falling wall conference so the screening would start for example from each country like if you are from oman then like you will be first competing among the omanis and then once you win like on the country then you would participate on the main conference which would be held in berlin and there you would present in front of internationals with uh, experts and scientists it's a really wonderful opportunity and you can see how they would do it from their youtube channel and the website another chance of it, okay another opportunity that you can do research and you can also solve the problem of desertification or any other issues that related to the countries the research council the research council of oman give fund for undergraduate students and postgraduate students and these funds like they would have to like they would work in a project for one year with supervisor and you can continue with the existing projects that you have but you have to apply for with, with it as a proposal and if it wins you will get the money and then you can also like do research read research and you can do a lot of things another very interesting and very recent challenge is called the oman humanitarian desalination challenge and in this challenge it's this is really like a challenging challenging uh, program for the whole world and basically it started with the initiative with the 
like uh, with Medrec, D1, Research Council, and also with some like uh, uh, experts from the UK, and they launched the competition for the world. So uh, it's a, it worth about seven hundred thousand US dollar price. What they have to do is that they have to invent a very cheap but effective uh, system, very cheap and effective handy system that can, for example, purify water or desalinate water in the time of crisis. Let's say now we have the crisis like COVID-19 and people in some of the countries will not be able to get access to fresh water or maybe in crisis like worse. So they can use your system, which is really very handy to purify water and to survive for for months in this crisis. So it's a very nice competition. Get to know more about it. It's really huge money, by the way. Isaac is another interesting program that you can apply for a volunteering work where you can also work with different issues like environmental issues. But this is more on volunteering rather than research. So you can apply to Isaac competition, which is basically an organization for the youth in the world. And you can travel for a country to do like some volunteering work with teams from different countries for example you can go to georgia or you can go to one of the asian countries and you can work with international team from those countries and from all over the world on on issues and by this you can really contribute a lot to the world and and you can make an impact so start with it and and use the chance here and these are the references uh, which uh, I used to make this uh, lecture so you can go through it you can read it if you are interested to know more I advise you especially to the read the national action program to combat desertification online it's really fruitful and some of the research work that has been done in the region at the end I believe that one day this innocent land would come to life again it will breathe the cool breeze of the flowers flourished on its blessed soil. It will hug the people who walk on its soft green floor and it will tell this story to all mankind that you have given it another chance to live. Uh -uh. It's not the end. It's not the end. It's just the beginning of a new step that you would take in the walk of life. So do it.